Today I will be demonstrating the menus and software features of the Camera Axe. In a nutshell, it is a small box that you can plug into your digital SLR camera and it helps you take photographs where patients, reflexes, or remote access are critical. Common uses range from remote surveillance, to wildlife, to time lapse, to high speed imagery. Both the hardware and software are open source. So here it is. You hit the menu button to cycle through the different modes of operation. This is the sound trigger mode. In this mode you use a microphone to detect when the sound passes a certain threshold and that triggers the camera or the flash. The next mode is the sensor trigger mode. In this mode you can plug in different sensors. I've made a light sensor, a simple mechanical switch sensor, and it plans to make a piezo pressure sensor. The next mode is the time lapse mode and it is useful for making time lapse videos. The last mode is the remote. The camera axe has a radio receiver in it and can receive commands from a remote. Let's go back to the sound trigger mode. Inside each mode there are various menus that let you control that mode. The first menu in the sound trigger mode is the delay menu. This lets you control how long after the camera acts detects sound that you want to take a picture. Imagine that you're taking a picture of a baseball player after hitting the ball. If you want a photo of the ball touching the bat, you would set this to zero milliseconds. If you want a picture of the ball a few feet after being hit, you'd probably set this to something around 40 milliseconds. One nice feature of this software is that these values are saved into non-volatile memory, which means that if you turn off the device or even take out the batteries, these values will be remembered so that you don't have to re-enter them all the time if you use the same or similar values frequently. On the next menu, you select if you want the microphone to activate the flash or the camera. You can see that as I switch these, the lights on the camera axe change. These lights are reminding you of which sensors you should have plugged in. You want to use the flash when you need very fast reactions. Most cameras have a delay of about 50 milliseconds between triggering and actually taking a picture, but the flash is near instantaneous. Lastly is the trigger value. Let's plug in the microphone. You can see that there's a changing value at the top right corner. This is the current sound level in the room. You can see when I'm quiet it drops down to the room's ambient noise level. You usually want to set this value to just a little bit higher than the ambient sound in your room. Once you have the sound trigger mode set up the way you want, you just have to si hit the set button to activate it. You can see the screen reminds you of some of the basic settings you have chosen. Press the menu button to deactivate the trigger and go back to change whatever you want in the menus again. The sensor trigger works very similar to the sound trigger except it has one new menu. With the sensor trigger you can trigger on a high value or a low value. Let's say you have a light detector and a laser pointer. When the laser is shining on the light sensor it detects a large value. In one case you might want to picture when the laser goes low like when an animal walks through the laser beam. In another case, you might want to trigger only when the laser beam is completed, like when taking a picture of a popping balloon. The next mode is time lapse. In this mode, you set the number of hours, minutes, and seconds that you want to wait between taking pictures. In this mode, when you hit the set button, it counts down to when the picture will be taken.
Lastly is the remote mode. All you can do currently is use a specifically designed remote to trigger the camera. The radio transmitter and receiver I'm using say it should work to a distance of about 200 feet, uh, but I haven't tested that yet. This, in the future, I might code more functionality into this remote. Since I share the full software source and hardware designs on my website, other people can create new sensors that I haven't thought of or modify the software to use the sensors in new ways.